Good morning, this is Eric from the African Homestead. Welcome back. It's about 5.30 in the morning. My alarm went off and then uh, the church rang the bell, which is an old propane tank outside the building here. And so it's time for morning devotions. I'm gonna take you along this morning. Back on the work site, it's uh, a little after 9 a.m. and uh, another day. It rained all night, and now it's just overcast and cloudy and cool. So it's another uh, good day for hard work. I definitely feel it today. As I was waking up in the night last night, you know, I'm getting old, so my hands, the joints are tight, and my shoulders are tight, my muscles are tight, and I'm sure by this evening and tomorrow, I'm going to be getting pretty, pretty sore and tender. But that's good just part of part of the work here so let me turn this around we're starting today is let me clean my lens real quick uh, maybe better is where we're starting today from the grove we're gonna start um, clearing the land from there and make our way over to this palm tree here and so that's gonna reveal the valley below and uh, most likely somewhere along this southern um, edge of the flat land leading down to the valley is where we're going to build the house. I haven't really decided yet where the shipping container slash warehouse is going to go. That's going to be the eventual spot for our garage. And then the first house we're building is a small two-bedroom house that we're all going to cram in and uh, haven't decided where that's going to go yet either. But as we get this land cleared, you know, leading over this direction, then it's going to give me a better idea of just how everything lays out. But I'm very happy with how level the ground is uh, it's going to be going to be a good good site for building and i'm going to work today on getting all these stumps cut i brought my chainsaw it's going to give me a killer workout as you can see here this is a steel chainsaw it's a 441 magnum with a 36 inch bar this thing is heavy now in liberia they consider this a medium-sized chainsaw turn it around here they consider this like a medium-sized chainsaw. The standard chainsaw for working here is the 070 model with a four-foot bar. Like 48 inches of chain. I don't know. I, I think it's... I don't know why they insist on that. Because a lot of the trees here, you could get away with, with a 24-inch a, a bar. And I actually want to... I have a couple of other chainsaws I need to get fixed. I'm gonna to try to sell them. I have an 070 with a four foot bar and I have another one or two of these 441 Magnums with 36 inch bars. If I can keep one and then I wanna buy a smaller one, almost like what you buy in the States, kind of the, the farmhand type with a 24 inch bar. It's just gonna save my arms and shoulders and back and be a lot lighter to work with. And most of the trees around here, uh, an 18 or 24 inch bar is just gonna be, it's gonna be fine. And there's so much lighter to work with. So that's my, my work today. And uh, I'm sure that'll help loosen up the muscles. I got about 12 stumps cut and noticed my chain was starting to loosen up and so I came back to the car to, to tighten it a little bit and noticed the chain was pretty dry so I decided to test to see if the oiler is working and it looks like it's not so right now I'm googling 
how to fix the oil or something I haven't had to do before and uh, I'm still new to this chainsaw to chainsaws in general and so last time I used it, the oiler was working fine it, you know you could hold it up against something the, the bar against um, you know a piece of paper or whatever tree trunk and you could see where it would spray oil and mark a line and it's not doing that now so this is a brand new chain I just I brought from the States a few months ago and I don't want to kill it and so um, I'm stopping for now and trying to Google how to fix it of course even though I'm up here on the hilltop and I have cell coverage the internet out here when you're in the city it's 4G LTE actually I find it to be faster than uh, using the internet on my farm in Kansas but out here it's like 2G, 1G, half G, I don't know. It's somewhere in the in the line of dial up. It's extremely slow. So, I'm taking a little bit of a break now while I wait for that to download and uh, trying to cool off a little bit. So, yeah, today's overcast and there's a very light drizzle coming down right now. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, 80 degrees or something, 85. It's cool. Um, but there's absolutely no breeze. So I'm just drenched in sweat. It's it's kind of like, yeah, just extremely humid with no breeze. And uh, so I'm going to cool off here for, for a few minutes before I tear into this. Hopefully fix it here in the field and uh, get back to work. Today's pro tip, use what you got. So after about 10 minutes, I was able to download the website on how to fix this oiler. And one of the things I need to do, there's a little hole right here that connects to the pump that's behind that cover and this hole is what oils the bar and the chain and so I'm supposed to take a, I think it was a 16 gauge wire and clear that hole well I looked all around for the 16 gauge wire tree here in the bush couldn't find it but what I did find are some thorns which you know are plentiful here if thorns were a cash crop I'd be a millionaire so I'm just gonna take uh, one of these thorns and use that to clear the hole. Just take this, insert it here in the hole. There we go, all clear. Another piece of maintenance that I need to do with this bar is here where the, uh, the groove where the chain glides. There's a gunk down in that groove. So in the spirit of use what you got, I have a machete and I have a glove. So I'm going to take this machete and just put it down in this groove, just like, I'm trying to do this one-handed, just like that, and just I'll use a little WD-40 to help clean it out, and I'll just slide it right down that groove, get it nice and clean. I don't have a brush to clean this out, but I do have a floor broom, so yeah, I'll use that. Uh -huh. So we'll clean this out with a broom. All right, got it fixed, got it all cleaned up, so all my bush uh, solutions worked out just fine. You can see I just ran it here, sprayed it against my tire, and made a nice mark. So I'm good to go, get back to work now. I'd like to have some advice from you out there who are more experienced than me, which really isn't that hard, but more experienced than me in operating a chainsaw. Um, honestly, I just have a few hours that I've used it. Um, I'm using common sense, uh, which you know, sometimes common sense is, is useful. You don't do stupid things, but then other times uh, common sense can't replace experience and knowledge. So I'm talking to you out there who have more experience and knowledge than me with running these chainsaws. So here's what I'm finding. I, I cut, as you can see, I, I've, I've cut about 20, maybe up to two dozen tree stumps now. They're not big tree stumps. Um, but it seems like after about 10 or 12, my chain gets fairly loose enough that um, I feel like I need to tighten it. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not tightening it tight. I've watched, you know, some YouTube videos on how to properly tighten a chain. So I'm following the guidelines of, you know, leaving a little, just a little bit of a slack at the bottom when it's loose. Um, I don't remember the exact amount, but I'm, I'm eyeballing it here. But... So after, after this, now I'm, I'm sure I'm running into some hardwoods. I mean, in Africa, we have some woods just like anywhere that are soft and some other woods that are hard. And then in here we have some woods that are extremely hard. 
and um, I've noticed a couple of the trees definitely were a little harder to cut. Uh, and these are, again, stumps that I'm cutting. I'm sure that I'm getting into some dirt. Some of these, I'll, I'll, I'll cut in a clip of one uh, that grow up in a bunch that maybe have been cut down before and then sprouted up again. Those, I'm finding uh, the termites and ants have built nests in the center. So I know I'm getting into some dirt and that kind of junk and that's probably dulling the, the chain a little bit. Maybe it's heating it up, getting in there. But I, it just seems like I shouldn't have to tighten the chain that often. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just the way it is, but it just seems like after I cut, you know, a dozen medium to smaller tree stumps, um, it shouldn't be loose already. So today I've discovered that there's an inverse relationship between man and machine when it comes to me and my chainsaw. It seems the longer I use it, the less I weigh and the more it weighs. Holy cow, I'm tired. Seriously, these guys are insane. So they work for like two hours straight with the machete, cutting bush, cutting bush, cutting bush, piling it up. They stop for a few minutes, drink a cup of water while I sharpen their machete, and they go another two hours, nonstop. They stop for a half hour, eat a bowl of rice, drink another cup of water, and they work for two hours. Then they stop a few minutes, drink a cup of water. I sharpen their machete again for like the third time today. And then they're gonna go again another two hours. It's just insane, the fitness level of these guys. They know how to work. Well, we just had a big dark cloud move over and it's starting to sprinkle. And honestly, I welcome that. I hope to get drenched because I smell bad. Another question for those of you with chainsaw experience, more of the mechanics uh, area. So I'm continuing to have a problem with the chain um, loosening up. I assume it's getting hot. It's still sharp, it's still cutting good, but I'm you know, cutting like three stumps and it's, it's really hanging loose. And I hate just tightening it over and over again. One thing I notice is that it seems like the oiler's not really working. I got it cleaned out, it's you know, it sprayed oil, and then since then, um, every time I've retested it after the, I tighten the chain, it doesn't seem to be oiling. So I have a little, a little bottle where I'm just putting some oil on the chain just to keep me going. But that's not a good solution. So if you have any ideas on what that could be, maybe the pump is getting weak. This chainsaw doesn't, even though it's been in Liberia for uh, like nine years, it doesn't have that many hours of usage on it. When you open it up, it looks brand new. Um, so if you have any idea on, on a direction I could go, that I'm heading back to the States in a few weeks. So if I need to pick up uh, an extra pump or two or some other spare parts, now is the time to do it. So I appreciate any thoughts you have. Thanks. Well, we had a great day today. Uh, a lot of hard work. I tell you what, we are all just bushed and uh, made some great progress. I'll turn the camera around, but uh, we're knocking off just a little bit early just because sun's coming out and it started raining and I, th I think everybody's just done for the day. So we're gonna call it. But uh, basically what we ended up doing was probably about doubling the size of what we cleared. And you can see it's going down the hillside here. I'm standing up on top of the hill. And the elevation drop is probably in the range of 15 or 20 feet to the, where that palm tree stands. So I probably, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have had them go down that far since we're more focused on the building site. But uh, yeah, it's been a good day. And then tomorrow we're gonna start with this line right here. So you can see over there is the, is the little road the little bush road and then this is the rest of the level land and we're going to try to push this line back to the two palm trees and that should give me a, a good enough idea i can know where to place the house and the shipping container and whatever buildings that we're going to have here so uh it's a good day and i'm tired so we'll see you tomorrow Hallelujah.